Well, how are you doing? <clears throat> okay, this video is going to be about how unworkable uh, the claimed oxymoron of a spherical triangle is in reality. There's going to be how they're purely mathematical. I've shown this in the past where they're all mathematical and they're all derived from the center of a sphere. Um, they can't be measured in reality um, because you can't measure, a, for a start, you can't measure, measure a triangle that has greater or less than 180 degrees. It's impossible. Um, if you're not adhering to geometry, then it can't be measured. It's simple as that. So no one actually measures these things. There's a lot of claims of them being measured, but no one actually measures them. Uh, no surveyor anywhere ever measured a spherical triangle. What they do is they calculate. That's what they do. It's a pure calculation. There is no spherical triangle ever measured. I'm going to show here <clears throat> why there has never been a, a spherical triangle measured. Okay, I'm just going to go right to here. So you can see this white line here, right? This one here and this one here. So this is from the North Pole to the equator on a globe on Google Earth. Over here and back up to the North Pole. Now, technically, right, <clears throat> I started here and I came down to here, uh, over to here and back up. Right, so <clears throat> the full the full perimeter of that is sixteen thousand five hundred and eighty point four eight miles. Right, now this is why uh, this is why spherical trigonometry is a lot of rubbish. Um, when I go and take this length here, which will be six thousand two hundred and uh, six thousand two hundred and uh, 14.32 miles, right? And I get this length, which is between here and here. That length doesn't matter too much because, but I just that is the, I get the length of that um, <clears throat> is 4,151.84 miles. So 6,214 miles is the length of the first, uh, statue of miles is the length of the first of the, the opposite. And the length of the adjacent is 4,151.84, right? And that gives us a, 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 a hypothesis, uh, sorry, a right angle triangulator, sorry, right angle triangulator, right angle, right angle, tri uh, right angle uh, calculator gives us a, a hypotenuse, hypotenuse length of 7,473. So, <clears throat> miles. So, we have 6214. As our uh, as our opposite, we have four one five one point eight four as our adjacent and seven four seven three as our hypotenuse. Right? See, this is the problem. If we just come back to here, back to here. So, on a globe, right, the full polygon is our full perimeter. Let's just say is sixteen thousand five hundred eighty point four eight statue of miles. Side A is 6,214.32 miles. Side B is 4,151.84 miles. But side C has to be equal to side A because the line is coming along uh, the equator and then back up to the North Pole. So both side A and C have to be equal, right? Now, this is nonsense. Uh, cause, so side A, ha side A has to be 6,214.32 miles as well, right? But in reality, <clears throat> where, uh, as I showed earlier, when we use, let's say, the full polygon in reality, our full perimeter is 17,839.16 miles. Side A will be 6214.32 miles. Side B will be 4151.84 miles. But side C won't be 6214.32. It'll be 7473 miles. Right, just to show... Where was it? Okay. You know, 7473 miles. Right? That's what it will be. So that's the problem the globe has. Rea the reality is 7473. What they have to have, they have no choice bec because they're trying to use a spherical surface is 6214.32. So if you, every single, every, and I, I didn't realize this until I started using uh, Google Earth on the big scale, every single triangle, right angle triangle, you try and make on Google Earth. Every single one of them, right, will have an hypotenuse shorter than reality, right? In reality, a triangle 
right, every right angle triangle will have a longer hypotenuse than every supposed spherical triangle oxymoron, right, hypotenuse, right, and this is the proof of it, right, because, and I prove, I've, I've noticed this in the past on other videos, that there's always a shorter hypotenuse on the globe. Why is there a shorter hypotenuse on the globe? I know why there's a shorter hypotenuse. I'm going to tell you, right? If we use this line here, any of these two lines, let's just say, right? And this line here as straight lines, then the hypotenuse between them, so this is our opposite, this is our adjacent, then the hypotenuse between them will be longer than this line here. And why will it be longer? Because what Google Earth has to do and what spherical trigonometry has to do, right, is they have got to keep the area in between these three lines equal, right, to what it would be on within the, uh, as area, uh, sorry, to what it would be as area within an actual triangle. So what they've got to do, and this makes no mathematical sense whatsoever, they've got to shorten the hypotenuse every time. Now, I just used uh, the, their north pole to their equator, uh, the north pole to the equator. I just used that, right, just to show, show, prove the point. But you can do it with any right, any right angle triangle on Google Earth. If you make a right angle triangle, and you use latitude and longitude uh, to make a right angle triangle on Google Earth, and then you use a, a right angle uh, triangle calculator, what you're going to see is that there is always a shorter hypotenuse with their oxymoron uh, spherical triangle. I call it an oxymoron because it does it can't exist in reality because there's always more or less or whatever than 180 degrees. You can't even have degrees. I don't even know how they can have them have degrees, but look, it doesn't matter. The point is there is, right, <clears throat> mathematically when they do this. But the reason is, the reason you have to have a shorter hypotenuse is because, as I said, the area, the internal area must stay equal. Because if these three lines are straight, that internal area won't be the same. Because this is a bulge. So they've got to keep the internal areas equal. So they've got to shorten the hypotenuse every time. But it makes no sense. How can you have an opposite and an adjacent length equal to a, right, a normal right angle triangle, but then have a shorter hypotenuse? It makes no mathematical sense. It's complete not a nonsense. I should have made this video some time back. Um, but I, I, other things got in the way. But I've known this for quite some time now, for a good few months. So it makes no sense. They have to keep that equal because in a real, like the area within this triangle here would be uh, greater if they, if they, if they, if they use the, this length of a hypotenuse, then the area would be greater, greater on their globe simply because, right? Simply because um, there's going to be the bulge because that's what they must do. They must make you believe you're on a globe. So mathematically, they must bulge everything out the way. This, right, this is what they must do mathematically, which means that they're breaking mathematical rules and breaking geometric rules by having to sh sh shorten the length of a hypotenuse. You can't do that. <laughs> In reality, you can never shorten the length of a hypotenuse because you, it doesn't matter what belief you have, if you're, if you're doing trigonometry, the hypotenuse, you can't just shorten the length of the hypotenuse because you're pre-assuming the earth is bulging out the way. But that's what they're doing. They have to shorten the length of the hypotenuse. It's, it's mathematically and geometrically uh, criminal, but that's what they're doing. And they're giving people the impression because if you learned how to do spherical tri uh, trigonometry, it can seem like, oh, wow, you know this really great, excellent mathematical thing to do but it is of absolutely no real practical use, really, in reality. You know, it's just extra maths that people do because they believe they live on a globe. It actually has no place in reality at all because, as I said, you can't have a triangle with more than 80 degrees and a triangle can't have curved lines. That's not, that is not a triangle. You know what I mean? You can call it what you want. It's not a triangle. It's, there's no such thing as a spherical triangle because you can't have a hypotenuse that's shorter than an actual triangle. As I can't have a, an opposite and an adjacent at the same length and a shorter hypotenuse. It just doesn't work. But they have to do it because they have to keep the area internal, the internal area within the lines equal to what it would be if, 
if those, if the adjacent and opposite were straight lines, like they would be in reality. So this is kind of like more of an educational video. Um, take the flatter people can take it that the opposition, most of them don't even realize this. They don't even realize that their hypotenuse will be shorter than a real hypotenuse. And they won't, most of them, um, until this video comes out, and I mean 99.999% of them won't even realize the reason for it. Because, um, you know, they just go along with things and don't think about stuff. But make what you want of it. Uh, this is complete and utter nonsense. It's not a real triangle. Um, you can't have a shorter hypotenuse just to make up for the bulge that you believe is there. Um, can't be done. This length and this length, um, they will always have, uh, will always create a longer hypotenuse than what the globe can produce. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and you got something out of it and you can use it to your advantage. Bye.